Hi, how's it going? Zach D Productions here, and I am here for yet again another movie review for you guys. So for this review, I will be reviewing Spider-Man Homecoming, which is the first Spider-Man film in the MCU in the Tom Holland trilogy. And I do think that this is a very good movie, and technically the first appearance with Tom Holland as Spider-Man was in Captain America Civil War. Uh, he was in that movie for a brief bit. But when it comes to the first solo movie with Tom Holland as Spider-Man, this would be the first one. Now, I will have to say that when this movie came out in the year 2017, I pretty much had no interest in it whatsoever. And I feel like that this was for a few reasons. It was a new actor, for one, that wasn't Tobey Maguire or Andrew Garfield, so, you know, it just seems like any time they get a new Spider-Man actor, I always am like, eh, like, I don't really have that much interest in it. I feel like I wouldn't be that way nowadays if, let's say, in a few years they do get a new Spider-Man actor. I, I feel like I wouldn't be that way now, but this is just how I was for the longest time. But there were actually a lot of things about this movie that were a major turnoff for me back when it came out. Because at the time, I didn't really watch this movie in full. I have seen movie trailers and movie clips, but that was basically about as far as it went. I, like I said, uh, wasn't really open to the idea of a new Spider-Man, but I understand now why they got a new Spider-Man. They wanted to have a Spider-Man for the MCU. So they brought in Tom Holland. And at the time, I was also not crazy about the whole crossover MCU thing. Now, nowadays, I'm kind of like, whatever with that. Like, I don't really see it that big of a deal nowadays. But it was actually something that I didn't really like, uh, which is kind of funny because, you know, with my films, I've taken some inspiration from the MCU. But again, you know, I'm a little bit more open-minded to you know, the aspects of the MCU now. And this also is not an origin story, which it's not a really a big deal. It's not, and I understand why they didn't go with an origin story this time with Peter Parker yet again getting bitten by a radioactive spider and losing Uncle Ben and becoming Spider-Man, basically. Now, it's not really an origin story per se, but this is basically the start of a new chapter for this particular Spider-Man. You know, you can tell he has some growing up to do. I mean, Tom Holland's Peter Parker, a.k.a. Spider-Man, is a very immature Spider-Man, which you could say is something else that I'm kind of like, that kind of turned me away, basically. Like, ugh, like, this, what is this annoying nonsense, you know? And also, one thing that I've noticed is that this is a very trendy Spider-Man. Like, when you watch the film and just everything that goes on, it it, it is a pretty trendy Spider-Man. Now, I don't know if it has to do with when this movie came out or where, whatever, but obviously, yes, I've had many complaints with this movie, and dare I say, around this time, this is when I have yet again fell off of the Spider-Man bandwagon. Now, what do I think of Tom Holland as Spider-Man? Do I think he's a good Spider-Man? I do. I do think that he's a good actor and a good Spider-Man. However, I do have to say that he is also the most overrated Spider-Man and possibly the most overrated actor in this generation. I'm just going to put it out there. I really don't think that Tom Holland is the next big actor, or deserving to be anyways. He might already be, but who knows? Who knows? I'm just tired of hearing about this guy. In fact, Tom Holland himself is actually tired of hearing about himself he has claimed sometime recently that he wanted to distance himself from social media because, yeah, he's tired of hearing about himself. And in a sense, I really can't blame the guy. You know, I can't imagine being in his shoes. So, yeah, there is that. And I just don't really get the hype. Now, do I think he's a good actor? Like I said, yes. But I don't see how he's any different from, like, Andrew Garfield or Tobey Maguire. Like... I don't ever remember back in the Tobey Maguire trilogy days, everyone claiming that Tobey Maguire was the next 
best actor or whatever. Like, I don't ever remember the hype. Even for Andrew Garfield, I don't, I don't ever remember this same level of hype. Like, what does Tom Holland have that the other Spider-Man actors don't? And unfortunately, this is one of the things that make me uh, think that Tom Holland Spider-Man is my least favorite. The fact that he's overrated actually is one of the reasons why he's my least favorite of the three Spider-Man actors. I'm just going to put it out there. He's probably my least favorite of the three of them. Now, I know that some people, a lot of people, would put Andrew Garfield as the weakest. Now, yes, Andrew Garfield has had the weakest Spider-Man movies, but when it just comes to Andrew Garfield himself, just generally, I think he's a solid Spider-Man, and I, I do like him more than uh, Tom Holland as Spider-Man. Now, like I said, Tom Holland, he's not a bad Spider-Man. He's actually a very good Spider-Man, you know, and he does a decent job in this movie for sure. But I just, again, I don't under, I don't understand what this guy has that the other Spider-Man actors don't. Like, yeah, he's a good actor, but again, he's no different from the other guys. You know, I don't know if it's just like an obsession, you know, I don't know if it's just like all the girls have a crush on him or something, but... They were the same way with Andrew Garfield, but I don't ever remember him getting this same level of hype. But either way, now I know that some people say, well, the reason that people prefer Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire as Spider-Man is nothing more than due to nostalgia. It's all because of nostalgia. Well, you know what? Sometimes nostalgia is a good enough reason, especially with Spider-Man. I mean, I've grown up with this character for crying out loud, so... I've pretty much been a Spider-Man fan all my life. Yes, like I said, there have been times where I have fallen off the Spider-Man bandwagon, particularly when this movie came out. But I will say that since a few years have passed, I have decided to give the movie a chance. I really didn't check out this movie till maybe a few years after this movie came out. So, yeah, and I do have to say that even with my complaints, now some of these complaints I still do have, I still think the movie is kind of trendy-like, you know? Even with all of that, I think it's a solid movie. I do. It's definitely better than the last Spider-Man film, which was The Amazing Spider-Man 2, of course, the last one with, uh, well, the last solo Spider-Man film with Andrew Garfield. So, yeah, it's actually a pretty good movie. And the Vulture is the villain in this one, who is played by Michael Keaton, of course, uh, who is basically a legend. He was uh, Batman in the late 80s and early 90s, and he's also a fellow Pittsburgher like myself, so that is pretty cool. And what do I think of the Vulture being a villain in this movie? Honestly, he probably is my favorite of the Tom Holland Spider-Man villains. And I do think he is better than Mysterio. And a little fun fact, before Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 4 got canceled, they actually had plans to make the Vulture the villain in that movie. So it is nice to see that all of that kind of went full circle for this movie. They actually had the Vulture be the villain in this movie. Now, like I said, you know, at the time, I was just not crazy about the crossover with the MCU thing in this movie. Like... I just remember, you know, after seeing trailers and movie clips, I just was thinking, like, this movie just doesn't look like or feel like how a Spider-Man film should. Like, it just doesn't seem like a Spider-Man film. You know, it just seems like a spin-off or something. I don't know, but... Or just some one-off idea, but... That's kind of how I viewed this movie. But over time, again, it's grown on me, and I do like the movie now. And like I said, Tom Holland, he's a good Peter Parker, a.k.a. Spider-Man. Basically, the plot of this movie is him still being immature. You know, obviously, he has some growing up to do. And, you know, he you know, has crushes on girls and stuff. Um, he has a, a crush on this one girl from his school. And, you know, he basically uh, leaves her uh, on the day of homecoming to go after the Vulture. And leading up to that point, he basically finds out that the Vulture is the father of this girl, and he's 
making all these weapon deals and stuff. And one thing that we do have to talk about is the Shocker in this movie. The Shocker is the biggest joke of a villain ever in a Spider-Man movie ever in this movie. I think that the Shocker in this movie is a much bigger joke than the Rhino from The Amazing Spider-Man 2 and the Goblin from The Amazing Spider-Man 2. I mean, he's barely in this movie, and he doesn't even fight him, you know? Like, he's just there for a little bit. Like, he, if they didn't address that he was the Shocker, you wouldn't have guessed that it was him. So, yeah, that's another thing that I could complain about, but it's whatever. But, you know, it's got a good plot overall. It's got a good story. I do like the storyline to this movie, you know? He, um, of course, keeps his identity a secret, you know, obviously, Ned finds out right away in this movie that he is Spider-Man, and there's a lot of cool scenes in this movie. You know, I do like the scenes where, you know, he's actually, Spider-Man is actually using his uh, abilities, you know, when he's climbing walls and stuff and swinging, and especially the part when he's on the monument uh, trying to save his friends in that elevator. That's a really cool s scene for sure, and one of my favorite scenes as well is when he's on the boat, you know, when he's using his webs trying to basically try to keep the boat from falling apart. I mean, obviously one of the biggest highlights to this movie for sure. And Iron Man is a big part of this movie as well. You know, if you're nothing without this suit, you can't have it. You know, uh, everyone's favorite line from him in this movie, of course, Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark. Uh, he always does a good job, but, you know, can't complain. And the ending, very cool. You know, he actually, uh, Spider-Man actually tries, um, to, uh, stop the Vulture when, you know, he's on that plane and stuff. And that whole sequence was very cool to watch. So, yeah, it's a cool movie. It is. It's very cool. Really good. Is it my favorite Spider-Man movie? No. Uh, definitely not the best, but still pretty good movie for what it is. So if I were to give this movie a score, I'll have to give it probably a seven and a half out of 10. I do think it's very good. So I'm glad that I gave this movie a proper chance and the movie has grown on me. Uh, like I said, it's not my favorite of the Spider-Man films, but for what it is, it is a good movie. So that's my review for Spider-Man Homecoming. I'm curious to know what you guys think of this movie. Do you like this movie? Have you seen this movie? feel free to let me know. So on that note, thank you for watching and have a good one.